Hello, everybody. So wonderful to be with you again. Excited the whole week. I'm getting ready for our meeting on Wednesday. Uh, whatever I hear that is interesting, I say, oh, I should share it with the women in our meeting. So uh, here we are. Motzei Vav Kislev. You know that today was the date of the vort of the Rebbe and the Rebetzin, Rabbi Menachem and Schneerson with uh, Rebetzin Chayamushka. Uh, let's do a Simen Tov Mazel Tov. start with, we're going to talk about Yaakov Avinu this week. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the whole week we are with Yaakov and the sons are born and we hear about Rachel and Leah and Bilha and Zilpa. So many characters, but the main person is, is Yaakov Avinu. Now Yaakov Avinu leaves his hometown going out into the world. Uh, actually they say he was, he left long before that and he was in the Shiva for a while. It's like Neshama wants to be in the Shiva for a while before it comes down. We'll talk about that soon. Um, and uh, he wants to get out from the, into the big world. And he sees, in his dream, he sees the ladder. The ladder starts from earth, going up all the way to heaven. We have a lot to learn from that. We know where the ladder starts. It starts with the feet on the ground. We know we start right here in this world with a physical world, you know, lowly world. But we want to go up. So the ladder goes up. We don't know, how, we don't know where it goes to. We, we, we're trying to follow it. We, we're trying to climb to get to as far as we can. But our, our job is to climb, to keep going, to keep climbing. From step to step, we're supposed to go up higher and higher. And um, we have to do the work. It doesn't mean we are going to finish it. We have to try. Let's do Yechu Michael El-Chayim. A Hasidic song written for the Rebbe's birthday. I don't remember by who. Yechu Michael El-Chayim. Yechu Michael El-Chayim. Yechu Michael El-Chayim. Magine Nure Elokim, Magine Nure 
אלוקים, והאבץ והאבץ נעימה שיחיך. So we have to walk from strength to strength. We have to keep walking. We have to keep climbing. In the song by Avram Fried, keep climbing. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the big differences between us and the angels. The angels that the Yaakov Avinu saw on the, on the ladder, they're angels going up, going down, but they were going either from heaven, going, coming down to earth to accompany him. They said the, the Malachim of, of uh, Eretz Israel were going back up, and the Malachim of Chutz Laaretz came down to help him. But in general, the angels are on a steady level. They can't, they can't, they don't develop. There's no development by the angels. The way they are is the way they are from beginning to end. They're always on the same level. Man is called nehalchim, walker, because we go from strength to strength. We climb, we keep climbing. So that's our advantage. This ladder by, that Yaakov Avinu saw, that starts from earth and going up to heaven, is in a way a parable to the work we do with tefillah, with davening. When we daven, we're climbing the ladder. We start from Berkot HaShachar, this lowly world, and Sukei de Zimra, trying to cut away all the thorns so we can see godliness. And then we get higher up to Berkot Kriyat Shema, that's already angels. We're talking about angels, world of, of, of feelings, world of thought. You know, there's the Olam Asiya, Olam Yitzira is the world of feeling. Olam Abriya is the world of intellect. There are angels of intellect. Kriyat Shema, I don't remember if it's still in the, in the world of Briya, it's already in the Atzilut, because Shmone Esra is for sure in the Atzilut. And that's where we are as close as we can to Hashem. They say that we, when we bow down, in doing davening, when we bow down, we're nullifying ourselves to Hashem. We have to remember that it's all Him. It's just Hashem. And uh, so we climb up and we, the worlds open up, or the holes, you know, the mekubalim, the, the, the big uh, scholars, they know that when you go from, if you, if you, if you take a Sidur Rashash or Sidur Baal Shem Tov, you have written there, Olam Asiya, Olam Abriya, Olam Yitzira, Olam Atzilut, they have it written there. And they know how to get into these holes and get, bring down the powers and that many. We don't know, we, we just, we're simple people. We just want to try and get closer to godliness. So we try to climb. Um, the Negun Ava Bavot climbs these steps from one down going up from Asiya to Yitzira to Buya to Atzilut. But today I want to teach you a different Negun. I want to teach you a Negun that goes from above down. It's the Negun connected with the Rebbe we want to talk about today, which is the Mitle Rebbe. Mitle Rebbe, his birthday and his yard site, same day. He was such a tzaddik that he completed the cycle of his days is the Shabbos on Yud Kislev. So uh, the Mitle Rebbe, there's a ligand connected with him. He didn't write it. It was written by his pupils, by disciples, by the, the participants in his choir. He had a choir and he also had an orchestra. The Mitle Rebbe had a choir and an orchestra and even have, had some horse riders. We're going to talk about them later. And um, so, the Nigun Kapelia, the, the, the choir Nigun from the Middle Rebbe, has four parts for the four worlds, but not like the Arba Bavot, the opposite. It starts from above, starts from Atzilut. They say that every day when we dive in, we have to go through Seder Ishtal Shilut again, the way the Neshama comes down, comes down in order to rectify the body, to rectify the, bring up all the sparks in this world. <coughs> That's why it fits the, the, the ladder of Tefillah, of, of davening, even though it's from above going down. So the first part is called the introduction to the service, the Voha Avoda. In this part, the Neshama is told, hey, Neshama, your turn, you have to go down. And of course, as expected, the Neshama says, no way, I don't want, I want to stay up here. I have such a great time in Gan Eden with the Neshamas, you know, if Neshama has its own song. And with the, with the angels, little, hearing the, the singing and learning Torah, what else do we need? No need for anything. But it has to come down. If we, the Shama wants or not, actually the Shama agreed. Before time started, the Shama already agreed to come down into the world. They say that the Kadosh Baruch Hu, 
um, consulted if he should create the world, if he should create Seder Ishtalshalut, should he create anything that comes down? And who did he consult with? There was no Torah yet, there was no angels yet. Who did he consult with? It's in the Shemot of, of Tzadikim. The Shemot of Israel were already existent because they're part of Rebona Shalala. And they, they agreed that they will to come down to the world when he's going to create it. So they already agreed. So this time the Shama is told to come down, the Shama doesn't want. Uh, you can hear it in the melody, there's some arg argument there in a way. And then the Shama says, so that's the first part, Mevoa Avoda, introduction to the service. Then the Shama says, please, 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 please. If I have to be drafted into this army, into this fight, into this world, if there's this lowly world, please let me soak in godliness just a little more. So that's the second part, to taste and see that godliness is good. That's the second part. The third part, uh, before the third part, between the second and the third, there's a sentence saying, I'm scared, but I'll do it. I'm scared, but I'll do it. That's the second, that's the sentence that repeats, this will repeat itself at the end. But this time, okay, so then comes the march. The march is when the Neshama Elokit has the fight with the Neshama Behemit, trying to, who's going to be the, who's going to be the ruler of this little town, of this little city, which is the body, and, and, and um, trying to nullify all the bad powers and bring out all the good, all the sparks that are hidden here. That's the war, that's the march. And the... Um, after the march, the Shama says, wait a minute, there was a battle, there was a war. Who did I win, win the war but lose the battle? Did I win the battle but lose the war? I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm just sitting in the mud like a little kid, enjoying my time here in this world, thinking I'm doing any good and I'm not, not going anywhere, I'm not doing anything. So after that comes a fourth part, which is Lishuat Chaki Viti Hashem. I need your help. Without you, I can't do anything. I don't know what's going on. I need your help. That's the Shuat Chakiviti Hashem. And then comes that sentence again, I'm scared, but I will do it. And this time the Shama already knows what it's talking about because it already went through war. So let's do the Nigun of the Mitle Rebbe, the Kapelia, the choir song. With the four worlds from Atzilud going down to Bria going down to Yitzira, which is where the march is somehow, and then Asiya, we need your help.
וקפליה, The Ligon from the Mitle Rebbe, number 12, in ספר ניגונים. We can tell a little bit about the choir of the Mitle Rebbe. Uh, he had a choir and he had an orchestra with uh, all kinds of instruments. Uh, I think the Friedrich Rebbe said that he saw the cymbals left from that orchestra from the time of the, of the Mitle Rebbe. Uh, either him or the Tzemach I have to look it up. Um, he, he was such a courtly behavior of having an orchestra and a choir that the Tsar became jealous. One of the reasons is that there was a Hal Shana in him, you know, the, the, they told on him to the Tsar and, and the, he was put in prison was because of this court that he had. And the Tsar was afraid he was trying to be a king and, and, and make a, um, a revolution there in Russia. So he had to take apart the, the orchestra. Uh, also, at the time when he had the choir uh, orchestra, he had horse riders. Uh, one of the horse riders was Rabbi Nachum, the son of the Mitle Rebbe. And they used to call them when there was special festivity in order to add simcha and, and, and they used to run around the court with the, with the horses. So one day, out of the blue, it's a simple every day, the Mitle Rebbe is calling the choir and the orchestra and the horse rider says, please make merriment, run around the, the court. And um, in the middle of, 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 of the happy doings, somebody comes and tells the Rebbe, your son fell off the horse. Rabbi Nachum, he fell off the horse. So he says, play even faster, play even happier. After what I say, he broke his leg. The Rebbe says, play, play make even happier, make even more simcha. And after what they come and says, well, the doctor says it's not so bad, it's gonna heal, it's fine, it's gonna be okay. And after a while, they asked him what happened, was it the story? So the Rebbe said, he saw there was a kitug, there was a, there was a, a bad judgment against his son. And in order to nullify it, he asked the orchestra to play and, and make merriment in order to nullify the bad decree against the, the son. So let's do a happy nigan from Parashat Shavua. Ufarats <laughs> have to break out, have to open up, have to, we try to get to a, a godly world. We wanna see this world as the world of God, not this just man, mundane world. Um, so let's do some more songs that can help us do that. One of the things is, we have to know that even if we climb up as high up as we go, still Hashem is always far away. Um, there's a pasuk talking about it. Um, Where can I go away from you? Where can I hide from you? If I, if I soar high up, Sham Atta, we still look and say, you're there, you know, we point at him, we're still far away from him. 
ועשי השאול, but if you fall down, if you get to bad places, bad times, הנקה, here you are. You know, and the, Hashem is right with us, He's always with us. If we fall down, Hashem is with us. If we try to think we know a lot, the more we learn, we, we sh- we'll learn that Hashem is even bigger than what we think. So there's two th- songs in Chabad that uh, talk about this, these words. First one is a slower nigun. Shabbos Yenotem nigun number 73, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see what I wrote. Yeah, I'm given 73. Uh, some people put the words on it in the section of my Atta. Sing it for long, long, but we, we want to do some more nigunim. Uh, this beautiful Shabbat Sinon of Nigun. There's another happy tune for Imesak Shamaim Sham Ata in Chabad. It's Nigun 256. Um, here it sings with the words from before. Ana Elech Murchacha, where can I hide from you? You know, it, it, it depends who's, who's asking. Where can I hide from you? If it's a misnaged, he says, where can I hide from you? There's no place I can hide from you. We see us, anything we do, it's choking for them. You can't, you can't get away from godliness. Godliness is everywhere. But the chassid says, godliness is everywhere. You can't hide from him. He's there all the time. You know, wherever you are, he's there with you. So let's do Ana Elech 256. Let's get it a little lower. I 
na 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 Because this world is, is olam, olam ilshon he'elem, godliness is hidden inside of the world. So we don't really see it. But we shouldn't be scared. We should try and do our job. And we should try and open up and not be restricted by our fears and by our, our previously uh, beliefs. You know that Hashem creates the world every minute anew. Every minute the world is created again and again and again. So whatever was before doesn't restrict me what I can do now. People use so little from the talent and the powers and the capacity in their life. Even the brain, we're not using, we're using maybe a third of a possibility of what a human brain can do. And, and the body, if, if you see in a time of, of need when there's a danger, the, how fast we can run, how far we can jump, how high we can do, climb, that, things we wouldn't believe we can do because we have these powers. We just don't believe in ourselves. We have to believe and know that we can do it. We can do so much more. Um, so let's, let's do a little bit of uh, telling Yaakov not to fear. Amar Hashem Yaakov, Al tira avdi Yaakov. You know, Al tira kimcha ani, I'm with you, don't worry. Uh, <clears throat> there's a beautiful Mojitzer Nigun about Amar Hashem Yaakov. Jokingly, they call it the Nigun of Adam Arishon. We'll talk about it after we sing. Uh, it was, it was by, composed by the first Rebbe of Mojitzer of Adivay Israel. Uh, just I need some liquids in my brain. So dry. Okay. This beautiful ligand, I love it because it's round. And it's, it, it starts the way it finishes. It, finish, it starts the next time like the other, the, the, the previous one finished. It's beautiful. And you can open your camera, as you won't see it afterwards in the video. You can be free and open up, and I'd love to see your, your faces and see who's with me. I'm Zohe. Microphone's closed because it's Zoom.
There's a Chabad one. I don't remember how it starts. But there's another one. There's so many beautiful Amar Hashem Yaakov. אמר השם ליעקב, אל תירא, אל תירא, עבדי יעקב, אל תירא. בחר השם ביעקב, אל תירא, אל תירא, עבדי יעקב, אל תירא. אל תירא, אל תירא, אל תירא, עבדי יעקב, אל תירא. אין סואן, אין סואן, אין סקול הניגון. There's so many from all kinds of חסידויות, everybody sings it in their own way. It's beautiful. יעקב shouldn't be afraid, shouldn't worry. Now, I, I was joking, they said that they, they jokingly say that previous Negan that we were playing, huh? that one from Mojitz, uh, they call it jokingly the Negan from Adam. Why do they call it Negan from Adam Arishon from Adam? Because they say somebody who's looking for a melody when he has to be a Chaza and he doesn't know what to choose, it takes this one. Who is it? Eh, it's from, it's ancient, it's ancient, it's from Adam Arishon. So that's a joke, <clears throat> but there's a truth in everything. You know that um, the Midrash Rabbah, the, 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 how do you call it? The commentaries uh, the, uh, from the oral Torah are from the Midrash. They ask, what did Yaakov Avinu do for 20 years outside in the fields with a with the sheep, when it was with the sheep outside of the fields, what did he do for 20 years? So there are all kinds of, uh, of ideas, what did he do, how he spent his time, you know, to use his time. And because he was in yeshiva before he went there, now he's just sitting in the fields doing nothing. So one of the opinions is he said to Hillim, he was saying to Hillim, how can that be? If Tehillim was written by David Amelech, how can it be that he was saying to Hillim? So things are not so simple. Uh, first of all, things that happen earlier are influenced but things that are going to happen later time is a is a one 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 cycle one how do you call it one round thing that we don't understand in it but people uh, so they can, can see time from what was and what will be at the same instant that's the way it is by looking at the world from above but we are just going frame by frame in our life to see what's happening next um, that's one reason the other thing uh, we have chapters in Tehillim that they say that they were written by people many, many years before David Amelech. Like the Mizmor Shil Yom HaShabbat, the Midrash says that uh, Adam, he said it, and David Amelech was just repeating it. There's a chapter called, saying, Maskil um, Eitan HaEzrachi, Eitan HaEzrachi is Avram Avinu. There's a chapter that Avram Avinu said, all kinds of chapters for people from before him. <coughs> chapters people are going to say after him. He's saying the chapter of, of Esther Malka, what Esther was going to say when, <coughs> when she got to Achashverosh. So time is, is a little different than the way we look at it. Now, I'm trying to get to a nigun that is very, very ancient. It's not from Adam, but it is from Yaakov Avinu. The famous nigun from Yaakov Avinu. And how do we have such a nigun? So we have it thanks to Rebbe Buchach. Rebbe Buchach was a Rebbe in Poland. Poland, there must be a town of name Buchach, and he had a melody that he used to sing in his family from ancient times, and everybody knew that uh, it was a ligand from the Rebbe Buchach. He used to sing it Shabbos afternoon, the holy of holy times, he used to sing it a long time, maybe half an hour before giving a Torah discourse, he used to say it for a long time. It was clear that the Rebbe is a ligand, the Rebbe Buchach. One of his disciples, one of the Hasidim, was a, a merchant, and he traveled around for his business, and he went into Russia to, to do business there, and he got stuck there in the holy days. So what is he going to do far away from his Rebbe in the holy days? He says, I'll go to another Rebbe. There's a Rebbe here in Russia. I'll go to him. So he went to Rabbi Israel of Rojin, the Rojin Rebbe, which was a very, very big tzaddik. Um, so the regime had a very kingly court, and in the regime, he davening there, and, and to his big surprise, Anyam Kippur, what does he hear his rabbi sing? The nigan from Buchach. Anyam Kippur? 
His rabbi is digging. How does it get to Rujin? So after the Yamim Tovim, he, he gets enough courage. He goes over to the rabbi of Rujin. He asks him, Yilam Deinu Rabbeinu, please, okay, tell me the secrets. How did the Nigun get from Buchach to Rujin? So Rujin rabbi closes his eyes, shakes his head, and says, no, what are you surprised? With this Negun, Yaakov Avinu took out the sheep to graze. Now he's completely mind blown. So when he gets back to his Rebbe, he wants explanation. He goes to his Rebbe and says, Rebbe, he tells him the whole story that you know Negun ended up there. He said, but, but please, how does he know? So his Rebbe closes his eyes, shakes his head, and says, No, what are you surprised? His name is Yaakov, and he has a spark from Yaakov Avinu. And here is the Negun. We have it thanks to the book of the Rebbe Buchach called Sefer Atoladot. And in the book, there's a story printed and the notes of the Nigan. And I'm playing it in my own translation into my style, uh, thinking of the shepherds in the fields and the wind blowing. Nigan from Yaakov Avinu. The Nigan from Yaakov Avinu. That's it. We should say goodbye and go home. Leave you with this. <laughs> uh, I love to say after they play the Nigan, think about it. If Yaakov Avinu was his Nigan, maybe the our Holy Mothers, Rachel and Leah, maybe they knew it also. Maybe they sang it to their babies to put them to sleep. Best lullaby. 
Let's do one of the more famous lullabies of our generation, which comes from the brothers, the holy brothers of, <clears throat> of Haritonov, probably from Aaron Haritonov, uh, because somebody took it and made it a lullaby in some Israeli um, play in 1920s, 1930s. It's very famous. But in Chabad, we sing it on Yom Kippur for Kine uh, Homer. So sing with me, with microphones closed. Nigan by Rabbi Aaron Haratonov, Kanere, one of the brothers. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, we have some time left. So, if we want to look at the world that it's only godliness and everything is Hashem, and uh, Reminds me of one of the words that they brought this week from Rav Yitzhak Ginsburg. Uh, we usually say Be'ezrat Hashem, which is very important to say Be'ezrat Hashem. If Hashem helps us, we're going to do it. If Hashem helps. But if we think about it a little deeper, uh, if Hashem helps us, which means we're doing it, and we want Hashem help, which means I'm the one doing. But if we go higher than that and we realize everything Hashem is doing, and we say, Im Hashem. if Hashem wants, it's going to happen. If Hashem wants, it will be done. If Hashem wants, I'll succeed to do it. We understand it. It's not us. It's Him. It's all Him. Um, I want to sing with you one of the Chavsidic Negunim. Because it's all Hashem, there's nothing but godliness. It's all just godliness. So you're welcome to join. I... I Keep apologizing. It's not my fault that on Zoom you can't sing together because there's a delay. If you open your microphones, it won't be the same time. But you can open your cameras. We can see you. That's good. But sing at home. And I don't care if you're off tune. Everybody can sing. Everybody can enjoy singing. Everybody deserves to have a good time singing in this world. Sizdoch ahats hevel havalim en od milvado. Cause it's all hevel havalim en od milvado. Nothing but godliness. 
Okay, um, going from the restrictions into the big space of godliness, we can also sing Mina Mesa Karatiya. We're calling you from the where it's very restricted and then we're answered, where it's so wide and open. And we can see godliness. Let's do the ancient, uh, I don't know how old, but. Uh, um, Old one, there's probably some more melodies from Ina Meza. Um, let's do, in order to finish, let's do some happy songs to bring the Geula. Um, and we could do um, So, yeah, remember, we can look at the world from higher eyes, from a higher outlook. We can take Nigan with us and, and help us open up and help us uh, feel that Hashem is everywhere. Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. Israel have no fear, Mashiach will be here this year. Am Israel have no fear, Mashiach will be here this year. We want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now, we. Mashiach now, we don't want to wait. We want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now, we don't want to wait. Right away without delay, Mashiach will be here today. Right away without delay, Mashiach will be here today. We want Mashiach now, we want. We want Mashiach now, we don't want to wait. We want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now, we want Mashiach now, we don't want to wait. Mashiach, Shabbat, 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 Shabb
That's it for today's meeting. And I'm going to see you next week.